So today I'm going to be doing a tech related video. Um, this is not going to be like a tech channel, but I want to talk about this because I think it can be helpful to a lot of people. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Amazon interview, uh, what was my experience, how I was able to prep and ultimately uh, get an offer. So this is probably helpful for like most companies and how I prepped in general. Um, but this interview, I'm specifically going to be talking about Amazon because um, I think it's a popular one that a lot of people apply to. So if you're interested in learning some tips and tricks and learning some great resources, keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to try not to make this video too long, but I'm going to give you a rundown of what the interview process looked like for me, the position that I applied for, and the time it took for me to prep and how I went about prepping, and then finally, like, what resources I used. So the... First part of the interview was a technical assessment, and I guess this is to weed people out before you actually get into the final interview interview stage. At the time, I was interviewing for an entry-level position, and I remember I was sick or something when the recruiter sent me the hacker rank assessment, and it wasn't like actually a hacker rank assessment, it was some kind of like Amazon's special version of hacker rank. But they sent me the take-home assessment, and I was sick, so I was able to ask for an extension, which was really nice. Um, so I took about two weeks to prep for that. I did have experience before in like inter in interviewing with other companies. I, it just had been a while, so I needed to brush up on the concepts that I've already learned in the past. But there were like the main concept that I just still was shaky on was dynamic programming. So throughout those two weeks, I took a lot of time just hammering through leak code and hackering questions. At first, I started off on leak code level medium questions, and I realized that leak code, leak code did not have like the verbose uh, kind of tricky questions that HackerRank had that were more wordy. Um, leak code was more straightforward, and for me personally, I knew that I had problems with um, previous interviews, like the HackerRank problems would just mess me up because it was just too much words and I just took too much time trying to understand the question. So when I prepped for this specific interview, I made sure to focus on hacker rank and focus on more so the word problems so that I can just be more comfortable answering questions in a time setting. I focused mainly on things that I was shaky with. So I did a lot of dynamic programming questions. And mind you, when I was doing the medium level questions, I was not able to solve all of them within a given time frame. If it took me too long to solve it in the interest of time, I would just like look at the answer, take note of how those people solved it and like move on to the next question. Because in my opinion, when cramming for an interview, it's kind of important that you have a large range of questions that you're exposed to rather than just like focusing on spending three hours on this one question, getting it right. So you need to cover a lot of uh, areas. So here are the main things that I focused on. So for data structures, I focused on graphs, um, trees, I focused on linked lists, stacks and queues, arrays, and then a little bit heaps. In each of these data structures, I made sure I knew how to insert and remove from these data structures. I made sure I knew how to uh, search through these data structures what the time complexity of traversal for or like any of the operations for the data structures were and i made sure i knew how to like sort them if they had a sorting some way to sort them um so i made sure i had all that down and then for algorithms i made sure i definitely knew breadth first search and depth first search on the back of my hand because previously when i was interviewing that was like one of the top questions they asked um, I made sure I knew how to do binary search. I uh, made sure I knew how to do, not implement merge sort and quick sort, but just kind of un had an understanding of the time complexity and how it worked. But just in general, instead of spending the time trying to implement these sorting algorithms and searching algorithms myself, I looked at what tools, like built in tools the language had to offer. So after I felt like I was kind of like okay with prepping, I finally sat down to take the test. And so the test was no longer than two hours from what I remember. So the test was two questions and I can't remember what the questions were, but I remember being surprised at how easy they were. 
um, compared to what I thought they were going to be. So I was like studying hard, like these complicated, like leak code medium question and uh, not leak code hacker rank medium questions. And I remember being surprised by how, how quickly it took me to finish the assessment. Um, so this can be your case where like, wow, this is something that I'm completely familiar with or something that's not that hard. And then you're able to finish it quickly. But I think it all varies on what specific tests you get. Um, it probably varies on what team you're applying for or what org you're applying for. So just still try hard to like study and prep for it because um, you don't want to like be hit with something you're completely unfamiliar with. I think what I like specifically about Amazon's tech take home assessment or technical assessment was that after each question they had like a a writing prompt where you can explain how you solved your answer and how you went about trying to solve your answer so this could be a great saving grace for a lot of people that either maybe got flustered on, the, on a question and didn't have time to finish or didn't have time to solve the test cases it can definitely like help your case so after that, I submitted my assessment and recruiter got back to me saying that I passed the assessment. I think it's probably like a certain percent of the test cases need to get passed. I'm like pretty sure. I was able to schedule an interview for the final round. So the final round would be a series of four interviews, each one hour long, and they would ask a, a series of both technical and behavioral questions. So I purposely decided to schedule my interview a month out because I knew that I had other things to do, like other work to do and studying for two to three hours a day when I have other work to do, like other school work to do is just completely overwhelming. So I decided to, I decided to uh, schedule it a month out to give me enough time to prepare. The interviewer will send you basically a study guide of everything you need to know on the exam or on the technical interviews, right? So, It'll be in the form of like this study guide that tells you all the data structures and algorithms that they're gonna, you're going to be tested on. For the behavioral questions, they're going to ask you about Amazon's leadership principles. And how I studied for that was like for each leadership principle, I made sure to write an example down of how some project I did or some work I did. Uh, it demonstrated these leadership principles or, you know, they're basically behavioral question, questions. So I think definitely writing them down before the interview saved me a lot of like stress because those things are kind of like hard to pull up on the top of your head when you're under pressure. So I highly suggest writing them all down. So that's what I did. So here are some of the topics that I studied for the interview. So as I said before, I studied all the data structures and algorithms that I listed before, this time more in depth as far as making sure I can implement the classes uh, and all their methods for them myself as instead of just relying on some kind of built-in library to do that for me. So I made sure I had all that down. Uh, as far as operating systems, I took an operating systems class like my sophomore year of college and definitely most of it like went over my head because I just was not interested in, <laughs> I was not interested in it. Um, so I went back and took the time to uh, go over some concepts like processes versus threads, um, how processes work, how threads work, um, and just how like concurrency works in whatever language that I uh, was, you know, interviewing in. I made sure to look at locks, um, mutexes, semaphores, and like understanding the differences between that. That's like most of the things that I studied. And I say I'd, I'd study about an hour to two, an hour and a half to two hours every day. Or I'd say if not every day, most days I'd study that long. So I also made a study guide so that if I learn something new and a question that I was working on, I can go back and references, reference it um, if I found it would be a useful information to help me solve questions in the future. Interview day, I spent the morning just looking over my study guide um, instead of you know doing a bunch of hackering questions. And that's when I say like you really need a study guide. It will save you a bunch of time. So you don't need to go back to 
uh, your old hackering questions to reference. It's all in one concise place. So that was a good way to spend the morning. I took like an hour or two before the test to just relax my brain and then went and take and went and had the interview. So the interviewers were pretty much really friendly. Uh, they asked, each asked me like two behavioral questions and then one technical question. And then the technical questions, like two of them were like design questions. One was probably some kind of graph traversal question. So the design questions you need to know, which is why I mentioned before, I made sure I knew how to implement these data structures. So the design questions there are usually like, design a class that does this or has these methods. So you need to be familiar with how these main core data structures work. My specific interview did not have a system design question, but I I told my interviewer before the interview, like my recruiter before the interview that I did not have any experience with system design. So they did not ask me that. I guess at like an entry level position, like if you're a new grad, they don't expect you to have that kind of knowledge since you haven't been working in the workplace yet. But if you do have that, like that's obviously a plus. So um, it might be something, I'm not sure if your recruiter will ask you specifically, but luckily I had the opportunity to uh, get a substitute question. In their interview, I say, make sure you ask clarifying questions, of course. Make sure you try your best to write clean code. I think what really helped me throughout the interview not be nervous is in the email that my recruiter sent me, they like had like in bold, like this, interview is supposed to be like a problem solving session don't think of it as, as your interviewer trying to test you and like find what you did wrong the final thing to note about the interview is make sure you have good questions to ask that you're genuinely interested in about your team because this is the team that you might potentially be working with or you you know your potential co-workers so aside from just like oh what cool things did you work on i think it's definitely important to ask Maybe like how was your career development over the years? How do you feel like Amazon supports you? Like specifically through the pandemic, if you're one a person that was applying in quarantine, I think it's definitely important to understand how, you know, your company values like work-life balance in like crazy times like this. If that's something that's important to you, uh, for me personally, if I was applying during a pandemic, it would definitely be important to me. And I suggest like reading up on the company beforehand or the team that you're going to be interviewing for beforehand because maybe that will help you get some better questions. Lastly, I'm going to link some resources below about what are these websites and specifically a YouTube channel. I forgot his name, but he helped me so much throughout the interview process understand different pro uh, different concepts, specifically dynamic programming. So I will definitely link him below. But thank you guys for watching and I hope if you are interviewing with any company that your interview goes great.